This is Nick with Sunrise Harvest Pheasant Farm, and in this episode, I'm going to be talking about shipping pheasant chicks through the mail. Alright, so here are the type of boxes that I use to ship chicks through the mail. Uh, before deciding to ship chicks through the mail, if you decide to do it on your own, just make sure that you understand there are guidelines you're supposed to follow. Um, these are U.S. mail approved boxes to ship day-old pheasant chicks or any type of day-old poultry. Um, the quantities that I normally ship on the farm are 25, which are these. Uh, here are 50 quantity boxes. And then the one over here is 100 quantity boxes. All right, so once again, this is something that I do. Um, usually with the boxes, or always with the boxes, I will always put the Excelsior pads in there as well. And then there will be tops that go with that also. Um, you'll also, well, I will also need to fill out a priority mail um, paperwork because on the farm here, I only ship to one day points. Uh, that's just my personal preference on how I ship because there are every once in a while you'll get, you know, birds that get to their destination a little late or pending the time of year, um, maybe a little bit too cold at night, too hot. You just never know. Um, and plus it just kind of reassures me knowing that my birds are getting to the customer and they'll be alive. Um, usually when I ship them, it's almost, if not 100% survival rate. The shipping would cost a little bit more. Um, usually one day points this time of year um, are 25 to 35, maybe $40 for one day points. Obviously, if you do a two day point or three day priority mail, it's cheaper, but we're talking about live animals. I want my birds to get to your destination on time in a timely manner and alive. I will also attach NPIP paperwork to shipments, whether it's chicks or egg shipments, because uh, I am NPIP certified. Some states do require that you have this paperwork. Um, I'm not sure exactly which ones do, therefore I send it with every shipment. Um, it's also reassuring that you have paperwork from NPIP um, from birds that you purchase, knowing that your birds actually get tested for the avian flu, and I also get tested for pylorum as well. The avian flu testing is done once every three months, and the pylorum is once a year. And then with the shipments, I usually ship uh, between the middle of May to the middle of July, so there's a small window um, when that happens. And like I've said in previous episodes, that hatches are on Thursday. And then shipments are usually delivered by Friday, sometime in the afternoon. All right, now assembling the boxes, they're not that hard because when they get delivered here to the farm, they look just like this. Um, they're already scored. Your tabs are scored so that it's easier for folding. The holes are already done. They may have covers over them. You may have to pop out. So we'll just make a box real quick. So when you fold this over, we have this section here and these tabs here that will go like that. We'll bring this side up as well. Bring those tabs, put them on this side of the box. And then we'll do the same exact thing to this as well. Fold them in, bring the tabs over, bring the little tabs in the box, and you're done. They also come with a lid as well. These ones still have the holes in there, but the tabs will make them out of there. Also, you may have to purchase Excelsior pads. Sometimes when I purchase them, they come with them, or they may not. Um, these will be at an additional cost. These are for traction. 
and for the bird's dropper. And then I put the lid on. Once the birds are in there, I attach the MPIP paperwork, which will go here. I will mark live animals and fragile on the box. Also in one of the corners, I'll put the hatch time of when the birds hatched. And then with my initial approving it, and then on top of that, the priority mail, the express, um, will have the paperwork on top and then the post office will work with that. Um, there are other options that you can use when it comes to shipping chicks. I just don't use them. They have um, feed gel. They also have heating packs. I mean, there's different things that you can use, but it's not something that I use. Um, usually when I ship chicks, it's the middle of May to the middle of June. That's, once again, just my preference. Also, from my understanding, I don't think you can ship pheasants outside uh, after July or before April, from my understanding. All right, and that's assembling the chick boxes. Now, at least for the 25, when you go to the 50 and the 100, they will have the dividers in there. That's just an additional piece that you'd have to attach, but it's not that hard. And as you can see, there's, this is a 25 quantity box. There's actually 27 in here. I usually put in a couple extra in, because um, you never know. And plus it's always nice to get that extra one or two. Uh, no one really complains on that, but they fit comfortably. Uh, they'll be okay. They'll huddle since they don't have the heat lamp. Their food source will be okay because that yolk will still be giving them that food for the next two days or so before they actually need feed. So they're going to be just fine. Um, when filming this, it was the middle of July and today is 90 degrees out and then they would normally need 95 degrees if they were on a heat lamp or anything like that. But there you have it. This is how I ship pheasant chicks through the mail. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment at the bottom. Also like this uh, video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. If you need a quote, if you're near the Alliance Ohio area and you're wondering if it's a one-day point is available where you live, feel free to contact us at shpheasants.com. This is Nick with Sunrise Harvest Pheasant Farm. Thanks for watching. Take care.